All right, so we printed quite a few prints and I have to say this is a pretty solid machine and overall did very well. So let's talk about some of the prints that we printed. So we've seen the Benchy. After that, we printed the calibration cube. So because it's a Core XY machine, this doesn't really mean much, but still we can look at the faces here. This is the X, the Y, the layers are all sitting very nicely. The X wall and the Y wall the bottom it did lift here a bit or actually that's not a lift that's missing material so it started printing with no filament so yeah that's I guess kind of my fault but other than that you guys can see the bottom is very nice as it is a crinkled finished PEI sheet texture and the top is also beautiful so calibration cube turned out very good so for the next print we got this a little froggy so I like to print these as there's pretty fine detail around the paws here plus we can see how the layers sit and all these curvatures very nice there's no stringing or very minimal a little bit here and there but yeah eventually I bumped the retractions all the way to one millimeter so 0.8 to 1 seems to be the sweet spot for mine we did have a little bit of sagging here and I might have had to do something with the higher speed printing but it is there and by the way these prints so far that we're looking at have been printed in 250 millimeters a second with the walls slowed down half speed here we have a pretty hard print to print as there's quite a few pieces and they all have to stick and if you know one of these legs fall off it's obviously failed but here you guys can see all the legs stuck and they're actually perfect there's no stringing also very nice and you know printed at this really high speed it's quite impressive how well it turned out there's a support here that needs to come off but yeah if we look at the face here and the head you can see how nice and clean the layers are beautiful print and again this is a dual color filament with this darker black I guess with the purple on the other side so yeah great print and shows how well the build plate also works as everything sticks very well so here we have a squirtle which is a squirrel and turtle shell and again this is in the dual color looks great and for how quick this was printed out it looks really nice now if you guys do see some layering here and there that's just from the lighting the way the light hits the layers but we do have a little bit of vibrations here and there and maybe some ghosting light light ghosting so yeah very good print here also so here we have a shark and also printed in pieces again perfect on everything everything stuck everything works no stringing the layers went down beautifully but what we have here is a mouth that's functional and I'm very curious to see if it's going to open up as sometimes it melts together and you guys can see none of the teeth fell off which is kind of the hardest thing to print as they come to a point and sometimes they will print crooked because they you know bend over as it prints but yeah let's see if this mouth will open up it doesn't want to easily so connect it in more places than normal so after prying on that front tooth quite a bit it did seem to break but it also broke a tooth off there so just break that off yeah it just comes right out so we just remove the shark tooth but yeah this is a functional mouth and I do believe if it wasn't for the crazy speed it would have been fine so overall good print but if you're gonna do more precision you do need to slow it down a bit and so our last print in PLA is actually this chain mail and this thing turned out perfect and you guys can see there are a lot of pieces here the amount of retractions this printer had to do is incredibly insane and you guys can see it actually printed this out and every piece stuck to the bill plate and yeah it's quite impressive to see that it is capable of doing these kind of prints so if you want to really stress test your printer try printing this chain mail so naturally I wanted to try different type of filament like ABS especially because we have an enclosure here and with ABS we did print out these wheels printed out pretty nicely overall we do have a little bit of stringing a little bit of see here layer separation on the bottom on the very first layers I'm guessing contraction meaning the filament shrinking it peeled off but yeah that's what usually ABS does so it appears that we probably need higher bed temperature slash higher nozzle temperature I think I printed at 250 and probably 260 would have been better but we do have a support here let's see how easy that comes off or if it does at all oh, let's see maybe I can just break it with my hand all right so it just came out with one twirl there and broke off really clean it's a quite a usable piece here which are little drift wheels for an RC car printed in ABS so if you want to do ABS printing not an issue and the next print will prove that as it is this contraption here so this I did turn up the heated bed to a hundred on this one so yeah it prints basically 
flat like this. And this is a functional print with lots of moving pieces and many different pieces that have to combine together. And shockingly enough, it actually turned out pretty much perfect. So you fold this over and then these are tracks that actually roll. So yeah, not bad at all. And this is an ABS, so it's really strong. Now, one thing I noticed is that if we look over here on these overhangs as it prints like this, since this is upside down, we did have a little bit of droopage there, so I probably needed to have the cooling a little higher. I did turn down the cooling for this print. But other than that, there's really no fault to this thing. And it looks like it's pretty much perfect. We maybe could be a little closer to the bed, as I can see some lines on the first layer or some gaps. But yeah, other than that, amazing print that actually turned out perfect the next part here is we have this rocket plane so it's kind of like a plane slash rocket you guys can see it looks really good and this was printed in PETG spiralized mode so this is a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around it's quite light and hollow and quite strong you guys can see I'm pushing on it just flexing back I knew I was gonna crack that but I wanted to see the limit but yeah very good here for PETG on the lower part but as we went up something strange started happening we started getting weird artifacts and especially on the back side you guys can see that it's pretty severe here not sure exactly what happened as it looks perfect here so I wasn't here to see what the printer was doing or what was going on and my suspicion was the lid here that opens up I think it was touching the spool and it was snagging on it a bit but I'm not sure if that was the problem or not but in any case it did complete all the way to the top and actually it looks pretty good even at the point point. and this is the full height of 210 millimeters tall which on our last print here we also have a rocket and it's perfect pretty much to the top there is a little bit of a consistencies and what's really impressive about this is that it's printed in TPU and so it's also a few layers on the bottom one layer all the way around so it's spiralized mode and what's great is well this thing is sealed pretty well so let's see if I can deflate it here by pushing on it it's quite large but yeah, because it's TPU, we can literally fold it into this shape here and then it'll just bounce right back. So it will have to inflate here. And yeah, this is sealed very well. So we have quite an accurate layer adhesion. There we go. So it's starting to take shape here. But yeah, that's one of the cool things about TPU is how flexible it is and how indestructible it is for certain applications. And quite impressive that this printer can do TPU also. So yeah, as you guys can see, it does very well with pretty much everything. ABS, I printed at slower speeds. I think it was around 100 millimeters a second. PTG, same. And the TPU, I printed even slower at 60. But the rest of the prints, as you guys saw, were at 250. So yeah, great speeds, great precision. And overall, the printer performed very well. But I Obviously not everything's perfect on this thing as there are some quirks which one of them we can't see but it's the filament detector location I decided not to use it so you can't turn it off here in the display and just go straight into the tube and speaking about the tube loading the filament and unloading does take a little bit the loading part is actually not too hard you just feed it in there and then click load and if you might have to help it push it the rest of the way to grab it but it usually grabs it and pushes it through but the quirk part is the unload once you click unload it preheats the nozzle purges a little bit and then backs out and then waits to cool down all the way to 62 I think and then after it cools down to 62 then it retracts it so there's a bit of a waiting period I don't know how long maybe about five minutes or so until you can unload the filament so that got a little annoying waiting for it and also these covers here especially this back one when it does fall all the way back it does hit a full spool right on the top which puts more drag on the spool and can cause the extruder to slow it down or to you know have a hard time pulling it through so that's kind of unfortunate i feel like they should have done something a little bit different in the back with how they feed their filament through the detector and how the lid opens and how far it goes so yeah not completely thought through there but that is one of the quirks here now you can't print with this just closed as i try to keep it open because these are pretty dark and you know it really cuts the light for the filming and whatnot else I need to do. But if you do keep it closed, it's obviously not an issue. And the last thing that could be annoying, if yours will have it or not, but at certain resonance and movements, there is going to be vibrations. Even though this thing is built like a tank and it's heavy, moving very fast, accelerating and decelerating does create resonance. And if there's anything remotely loose or even a little loose that can vibrate, it will vibrate. And so this printer, at certain speeds and movements, it developed a sound, I guess. And maybe I need to run the input shaping again to 
help with that. And also I feel like because the feet are plastic, if we put it on something rubber, or like a rubber mat, or even get some kind of foam pads underneath, that will greatly reduce the sound and quiet this thing way down too. So again, there are some quirks with this thing, but overall it is built extremely well with a very solid structure. Big pluses for the high speed printing, Core XY configuration, very nice hot end, heats up super quick. On the nozzle, bed is pretty reasonable too. It did take a few minutes to get to 100, maybe about five or so. The rag drive extruder is very strong and pulls the filament no problem. We got a very reasonable build volume of 230 by 230 and 210 tall. Linear rails on the X and Y and rods for the Z. We do have complete out of bed leveling which seems to work very well and compensate as it moves around. The nozzle can preheat to 300 and I got the bed to 100 no issues. We do have silent steppers so it is quite quiet at lower speeds. And of course we have a sealed design. Close all the lids and you're enclosed and that really helps with printing ABS and other materials that require enclosures. But of course we do have really dark doors that you're either gonna really like it or maybe it's a little too dark because there's no light on the inside, which I wish there was, so you can see your print when you're closed or these should maybe be a little less dark. But that's more preferenceable. It does look really nice when it's closed and clean. And I do love this light up here for the Kangaroo LP1 logo. And the last thing I think we should touch on is the screen. It is 3.5 inch diagonally here. It's on the smaller side even though it's not tiny but the font is tiny for the most part you do want to use this stylus that comes with it i just have it hanging here on the knob you can use your finger if you use your fingernail to kind of click on stuff but again the font is super small but overall the layout does work and you do have quite a few options in the screen so yeah overall i think this is a good printer it feels like it's 99 percent or 95 percent polished where a few more tweaks would make it perfect but with that said it performs very well and very easy to get started with and pretty much has everything you'd want in a 3d printer especially the connectivity through wi-fi on your network to control it via the clipper software which is probably the best and most comprehensive way to access your printer and communicate with it so if high speed enclosed clipper with great build volume is on your list then i think the klp1 here is a great machine and so for everything it offers for the right price it's quite a good value